Hi guys, Jason was here. Welcome to Ask Golf on our channel. Today we're doing a video comparison between TaylorMade P790 and Mizuno Pro 225. Now these are the players distance category, which means therefore players who want a bit more extra distance. These are not designed for people to smack all over the face. They are full on game improvement irons. And if you are someone who uses extreme parts of the face, I necessarily wouldn't be choosing these as an option uh, for your next test. But um, we'll do forgiveness tests in between these two right at the end of the video. So stick around for that one where I test it all over the face and see which one wins. But Hollow bodies design, which means we've both got tungsten in there. I think it's 31 grams when it comes to the P790 and 28 and a half grams when it comes to the Mizuno Pro. Not much in it. They've both got springy faces and they've both got different ways to quiet it down. Now, obviously with a hollow body construction, it can get quite loud. And so you've got speed foam in the P790 and you've got copper underlay when it comes to the Mizuno 225. So TaylorMade have opted for filling the void and Mizuno have opted for coating the whole golf club in a lovely layer of copper to quieten it down different ways of doing things. But there will be potentially a feel difference between these two. Be interesting to see if there's any performance difference between these two. I have got full reviews of these on my channel. By all means, when it comes to the individual ones, I'll put a card up the top there so you can see in depth when it comes to both of these irons. Right, so let's go get the simulator on. Let's go put it on a hole where you have to carry some water or something like that. Let's go have some fun doing that and see which one wins when it comes to the looks and feel department. Simulator is now on, we have it at the Blue Bayo, hole 17, par three, it's 173 yards and it is a carry. All over swamp, not water, we have swamp, we've got trees to miss and a very interesting green as well. So it'll be a bit fun. I've set it at 173 yards and I will be doing this test at a slightly slower speed. These are for the player's distance. So we are talking about um, someone who wants a bit of extra distance. If you swing at speed like I do, 92, 93 miles an hour, generally speaking, you're not gonna need distance. Uh, if not, your gappings are gonna be too big. Again, if you were to have a fast swing and possibly put these say P790 or 225 or I525 or anything else like that in your bag, you have to be conscious of your loft gaps be mindful. So these are gonna be for the people who swing sort of 85 to 90 miles an hour potentially, or possibly even lower than that, but mainly in that category. Right, P790, we are talking players distance, so we are talking players looks. The top line is this medium, it's the same again when it comes to sole, it's medium. Blade lengths are medium, they're not big, they're not small, they're just medium. And then down by the golf ball, offset is not much really. I mean, obviously being players distance, they are looking for a certain, and there'd be no difference really when we go to 225. The difference between these are minimal when it comes to looks. The main thing will be, I think more than anything else in the field department or the sound more than anything else. The P790 with the way that it's constructed, uh, even with the speed foam in there, it may sound a little bit louder than the uh, Mizuno Pro. But remember the Mizuno Pro, everything about a Mizuno is the feel side of things. Um, different companies have different uh, design ethos when it comes to how they want to go forward with their own golf clubs. So, right, let's go give this a hit because um, the difference between these when it comes to loft is half a degree, which is nothing. So I will not think, what well, I will think, I don't think there'll be that much difference, if any, uh, in performance between these two. Nice toe shot to start with. <laughs> Oh, I haven't had one in yet for a little while. So, um, but yeah. So that one there, a 88 miles an hour swing. We are decent on the delivery, but as you can see there, six mil low, nine mil tow. It was 15 mil off gross. It wasn't, a, you could feel it. You definitely do feel when you're not hitting middle in a player's, cat, uh, player's distance category. And then the feedback gets even more sensitive when you go more in say the P770 or 223 and then obviously full on blade, you're gonna get the Uber. You near enough call it to the millimeter strike. The sound, the sound is, it's louder. Um, I say louder. Uh, I haven't done the 225 yet, but I've hit the 225 enough to know this is going to be uh, audibly uh, noisier when it comes to strike. Down the left side, 
Might cut back, not quite sure. What's the speed on that? Gotta be half careful of the speed. Just good shot, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever, but he's loud, it's definitely yeah, eight, nine miles an hour. Decent delivery, decent strike. Now, when it comes to the low strike, Mizuno, Taylor made themselves are saying when it comes to even their, on their own website that they're protecting against the low strike. Because of the tungsten they've got there and that speed pocket, everything is designed in the P770 to protect against low strike. So if you haven't seen the video that I've put out when it comes to say the i525 against the P790, how the P790 works compared to say an i525, i525 is, is more forgiving left and right, but a P790 is definitely more forgiving out the bottom of the golf club. So depending on how you hit and how you use your strike pattern when it comes to your uh, golf, then again, possibly choosing uh, different golf clubs based on uh, how forgiving they're gonna be when you don't quite hit them, which arguably we don't hit middle all the time. That's left. That's my fault, not the golf club. That's gonna be left. That's gonna be, oh, what a bounce. Keep coming, come on. That was horrendous. That's me, not the golf club. You can be able to see that comes up there. Um, yep, yeah, par from the inside, face slightly closed. Let's go that way, please, shall we? Um, that was going to miss the green, uh, definitely. But um, members bounce, but um, uh, what do you, sound-wise, uh, it's loudish. It's not game improvement loud, definitely not game improvement loud, but it's real, it's like properly real fun uh, hitting it because it gives you that real confidence-inspiring punch when you hit it. And I really could play something like this or a 225 in longer irons, not necessarily the game, uh, the, the scoring irons down the bottom now. I'd want my, I'd, I'd want much more feel and a much more um, finesse than these. These do feel like they're like a trampoline off the face, and of course they will do. They've got very springy faces, and that's the whole idea, to try and gain a bit of extra distance with their springy face. Slightly toey again. That'll go up on the old, you could feel it. Oh, get down. Good result though. I mean, that's the whole idea. These, they're designed to be forgiving off moderate miss hits. So that's five mil low, seven mil toe, 12 mil gross off. You could feel it, um, feel the strike, and it's done absolutely fine. It's done 35 yards in the air, 48 degrees ascent angle, 172. It's fine. It's doing absolutely well, fine, considering I didn't strike it properly. But that's the whole idea of these irons, right? One last one, and then we'll flick over to the 225. Oh, that's a different one. <laughs> Slightly low heel. Oh, just over. Oh, and we, no, we're gonna roll back. Don't go in the bunker. Slightly low heel, open face. There you go, eight mil low, seven mil heel. That's an interesting one. So the face was 1.7 open, which was the part which encouraged it to go to the right hand side. And I just misstruck it slightly low heel. Okay, it's a single digit miss. It's not massive. However, it is a, it is a decent chunk of distance taken off. Efficiency's now gone down to 1.30 when it comes to a low heel hit. So it'll be interesting right at the end of the video when I test these, obviously performance, etc. when it comes to the proper just testing rather than hitting on a, uh, on a hold. And also the forgiveness side of things where I try identically as best as I possibly can do to hit these equally off the face, off different parts and see which one's more forgiving than the other. Right, let's go over to the 225 and see how that compares. Mizuno Pro 225 in my hands now, and straight away, the biggest difference between the P790 and 225 is the physical looks of it. This is much shinier. It's much more chrome-like in its appearance, although it's not quite, uh, quite chrome. Full-on chrome is the 221, the blade brother of the 225, and effectively the 225 just looks like a 221 that someone has taken the shaft out, put an airline down the hosel, and, and blown everything out a little bit, because top line soles and blade lengths, etc., are slightly bigger than 221, but it's built on the basis of a 221, just slightly fatter and hollow-bodied and stuff like that. And so when it comes to the physical dimensions between 225 and MP, MP, P790, there's next to no difference in it. The top lines are identical. Sole thicknesses, there's nothing to choose whatsoever. Blade lengths, again, they're so, so close. I mean, I wouldn't put, no, there's nothing, there's no difference between these two at all. And even offset, it's like they've come out the same factory 
but just one's put a different finish on it. Uh, but there is a big difference when it comes to the physical um, makeup of it. Obviously you've got copper underlay uh, in 225 and that does have the effect of making it sound at impact a little bit softer. So let's go give this a hit and see if there's any difference when it comes to the sound. Um, I think there should be when it comes to this over a P790. Where's my miss again? Slightly low on the face and face open. Now that's an interesting strike. Low on the face, poor strike, uh, five mil heel, a uh, six mil low. So poor strike for me and 2.2 open. So there's off to the right and there's a poor strike also. Already though, even though that was not the best example and that's always gonna feel worse than the middle strike, that already feels softer than the P790. Now that doesn't mean that the P790 is bad and the 225 is great. It just sounds, that's all it is. And if you're looking for sound when it comes to softness, 225. If you're looking for something a bit more confidence inspiring, a bit more of a punchy hit, P790. And it's all subjective, that's all it is. That was not the greatest of hits, so we'll do it again to see if we can actually catch uh, one out the middle. Yeah. That's much more in the middle. Face still open fractionally, but a much more middle strike. So the, the sound is distinctly different. Absolutely, Miss Green, absolutely different. There is the softness sound on a 225 is, is different between that and a, and a, a P790. But then 225 is different in, in respects to all uh, hollow body designs. It's compared to an I-525, I-525 I is loud compared to 225. So really, the 225 stands out above every single other hollow bodied iron on the basis of feel, on sound. But that's only because Mizuno have decided that they want to go down that route of sound or feel with all of their golf clubs, even if it's the game improvement irons, uh, not only their blades, but um, yeah, distinctly different sound, but performance wise, do you know what? I don't think there's gonna be much in it, if any, between them. Fractionally left, fractionally left, slow down, Jay. 91 miles an hour, just caught that on, um, on quad. So it's going a bit further, purely on me swinging faster, nothing on the physical head. So that's my fault. I'm not swing, I'm, as I'm warming up, I'm swinging faster and of course, that would make me hit it longer. It's nothing to do with the head, it has to do with me. And when it comes to doing the full testing, I'll make sure that I get the swing ground in at an 80, high 80s mark uh, for both of them to make sure that they're fair testing. On this, I'm just hitting, but the difference is distinct. That's six mil heel, but the sound difference is distinct. I, I personally prefer the sound of this all day long. Just do. I'm a blade player, so I like softness. And this thing delivers that in spades. Now, if you're gonna miss hit it, and I've, I, I do, I miss hit from time to time. I can't help it, I'm a human being. And you're gonna get a difference in performance and sound through miss hits, definitely. But even through miss hits, this one sounds softer, quieter than P790. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, that's slightly healy, but it's doing really, really well. The sound is distinctly different. So differences between these two, when it comes to strike, uh, the sound that you're gonna get from these are, yes, different. When it comes to performance though, do you know what? I think there's gonna be next to no difference whatsoever. And when it comes to forgiveness, that's gonna be the interesting thing. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna go hit this load times off camera, go whack it all over the face, see what the performance is for normal shots and also capture what happens when you hit it all over the face and see which one wins. So I've done a load of shots with the P790 and the Mizuno Pro 225. Um, it's a strange result and um, Spoiler alert, I can't pick a winner. I can't pick a winner in performance and I can't pick a winner in forgiveness. We'll go do the forgiveness in a bit. Let's just go by the uh, performance now and see which one doesn't win when it comes to the performance of these two irons. If we go Mizuno Pro 225 first, 121 and a half mile an hour ball speed, launching at 19.3, spinning at 5.2, peaking out at 36 yards in the air and descending at 48.2 degrees. Carry 176. 
that's up there. I've got four bits of information, so I'll see I can squeeze it up on there so you can easily look at it and all on one screen. Um, go to the P790 now. We've got 121 miles an hour rather than 121 and a half, all of a half a miles an hour. Um, launching 19.9 rather than 19.3, so we are losing half a degree or so in launch, but half a degree. Uh, spinning slightly more, 111 RPM more. That's it, at 5.3, um, going 37 yards in the air, one yard higher, although that could be 0.5, and they round up, so that is as little as half a yard, and descending 0.6 of a degree steeper. That's it, <laughs> that's it between the two. But it's going 174, so it's carrying two yards less than a 225. Within reason, guys, these are so ridiculously close, I would not be able to pull apart a winner, because if I did, if I hit another 50 shots with each, to get another data set tomorrow, the chances are they might flip over or they might be exactly the same. Um, they are so, so alike, it's crazy. Let's go have a look at the club head data to make sure that I'm being honest and it, everything's up, uh, up front and transparent. If we go the Pro 225 first, I've got 89.5 miles an hour, efficiency 1.36, efficiency or smash factor, bang for your buck, how much club head speed you put into, how much ball speed you get out. Uh, club path and face to path is so ridiculously small, zero, zero. Uh, loft is 25.7 degrees dynamically delivered and face impact is on average one mil heel zero or high remember I do have standard deviation on there we are comparing two golf clubs so comparing standard deviation is key because obviously you can hit a let's do 10 shots as an example 10 shots and I'm gonna hit um, 10 mil heel 10 mil toe 10 mil heel 10 mil toe 10 mil heel toe for that data set of 10 so You've got an average zero, but you've not hit it in the middle yet. You go to the next data set or a different golf club and get an average of zero, but you hit those 10 absolutely in the, in the middle. Well, you've both got an average of zero, but one golf club is severely going to be disadvantaged more than the other one because of the strike inconsistency, hence standard deviation. So I've got that up on there so you can have a look at. Uh, P790 time, uh, club of speed 89.4. 0.1 of a degree difference, that's it, 0.1. And efficiency is 1.35, so 0.01 of a difference, but that is it. Attack angle 3.5 down, club path and face to path is so ridiculously zero, um, and loft 25.7, so exactly the same as Pro 225. So there's no differences in loft delivered at all. And face impact is 0 mil toe, 2 mil low, so one millimeter worse one millimeter than 225 but the standard deviation is five and three not six and three so i arguably hit not arguably i did um hit the p790 on average closer to the middle more often so that there's there's no disadvantage in that whatsoever so within reason it's identical and there's so little difference when it comes to the trajectories yeah, basically exactly the same. Let's go to the forgiveness now to see if there's anything difference when it comes any difference when it comes to forgiveness. You've seen they've got the graphic re representation on there quickly. By no means look at the top right the dispersion rings. Why? Because there is one errant shot in there for the P790. Really should have took it out, but I did hit it, so it goes in there. Um, and that skew whiffed the uh, dispersion rings. If I take that one out the rings are very, very, very close. So again, dispersion left and right, that's a measure of the golfer. That's the golfer's, well, within reason, that's the golfer's responsibility when it comes to front and back. Now, forgiveness of a golf club can make a difference to how much control you've got of hitting the golf ball at the right amount of distance. And so, yeah, that can help, but left to right is me. Front to back, the golf club can help. Right, so let's go to the forgiveness side. Right, 225 first, we're gonna do heels, lows, and toes. Um, 12 mil heel, zero mil high, and look at efficiency level, 1.33. Um, not bad from a 12 mil heel. Remember, we're not gonna be t testing like properly extreme hits. These are players, distance irons, these are for people that don't hit really wacko shots. So a certain type of player is gonna be using these, so we're not gonna go off the scoring lines kind of testing. Um, dropping to 1.33 efficiency, so it's dropped 0.03 from its normal amount. Um, if you go over to the uh, P790, you've got 11 mil heel, two mil low, so within reason exactly the same as a 225. Um, going 1.32 efficiency. Well, let's start at 0.01 less, so that's dropped 0.03, exactly the same as a 225. No winner there when it comes to uh, drop-offs, when it comes to heel strikes. Let's go low strikes. Remember, these two golf clubs are basically designed very similarly with a more centrally positioned uh, tungsten lump. 
Um, 225 to go first, three mil heel, 12 mil low, 15 mil off the uh, middle, gross, but yeah, 12 mil low is the main thing. We have a 1.32 efficiency. If we flick over straight away to a, a Tame P790, we have 12 mil low, two mil heel, rather than three mil heels, we have one mil better. It's so close, exactly. It's the 12 mil that's the worst bit. Um, and it goes over to a 1.30. So we are dropping 0.05 of an efficiency um, against 0.04. So you could argue, although I wouldn't, because one's got a slightly closed face and one's, it is marginal. So within reason, everything is identical between low strikes as well as heel strikes. There is no clear winner between these two when it comes to heel or low. Let's go see toe, if there's anything different there. We've got the P790 first on a 16 mil toe um, at 1.30. Now that's dropped 0.05. Let's go over to a 225. So a 15 mil toe, one mil better, but one millimeter is nothing. And that's 1.31 no real difference whatsoever. It is hilarious when it comes to um, how close these two golf clubs are. You can critique it as best you can do, but un unless you get a robot to deliver exactly everything exactly the same, um, which I try my best as the best I can do to try and get this information as close as I possibly can do when it comes to the misstrikes and see what the differences are. But again, I, I am human. But it just goes to show in the three different locations, heel, low and toe, these 225 and the P790 is basically identical. What would I choose as a winner? I can't when it comes to performance because they perform exactly the same. What would I choose in forgiveness as a winner? I can't because they're both forgiving as much as each other. What would I do when it comes to the looks and feel, the too subjective side of things? Well, I'm a blade player and I'm a chrome blade player. So I like chrome, so I'm gonna like 225 because it's closer to chrome. And I like blades because they're soft feeling and so you're gonna get more of that from a 225 because of the copper underlay. For me, that's what wins for me. But the subjective side of things, the feel and looks, are for you guys down the lens to like or dislike or whatever your decision would be. If you're looking for a bit more of a confidence inspiring punch that you're gonna want from your iron, well P790, if you want that feel, that softness, 225. If you want shinier looks, 225. If you want a bit more satin looks, P790. That is basically what it comes down to. I don't know what the cost differences between these two golf clubs are at all, but within reason, when it comes to it, these two are so closely matched, it's silly. So, I hope you liked the video. If you did, go on, thumbs up. YouTube likes it, so do I. Next to it is the subscribe button. If you can click that one, that'd be brilliant because it's great for the channel. Also, next to that is a bell icon. That's a notification bell if you click that one. That will notify you next time I upload another video. So, I hope you're well, and we'll see you again soon.